today, I've got a couple of interesting images to show you, and they're both satellite images taken by the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter, okay? And uh, this is one of them, and this is the other. Now, these are both interesting. Now, I can't prove these are artificial structures, but they do look artificial, at least some of them do. And the first one I'll show you is this one. Uh, this is Arabia Terra, okay? What we have here in this image is what looks like a salt mine or something similar. And we've got a lot of very interesting terrain here. And uh, you've got the scale here. This is, five, this is a huge area and is something like five kilometers um, in width, this image, okay? So we're looking at a very large area. And what we have up the top here are these cells or what I would call ponds, okay? Now, I'm not saying these are all artificial, but some of them, this looks very interesting here. We've got a very interesting formation here, right? We've got what seems to be a river inlet or area here coming in. The river comes up here, up to here. You can follow it along. There's the riverbed there. And then we get to this area here where we have what looks like a set of ponds similar to a salt mine or something like that, okay? And you can actually see the formation here. Now, this image has, uh, has had its uh, contrast turned up. I turned up the contrast to make it stand out more. I've got a clip of it in here as well. This is what it looks like raw, a bit pasty, but you can see all that there, it's all there. We've got this long line of going across here with these cells here coming down, right, in an interesting formation. We've got one going across that, that way. This comes down here. The riverbed is here. This is the riverbed coming along here, which feeds into it, right? So it's like a river inlet. Now, of course, a lot of the, this area was under, under water. It was an ocean a lot of this area, and there were lakes and ocean areas all over the place, and river inlets and things like that, okay? And uh, a lot of this is water erosion, but what we're seeing here, I think, may be an actual salt mine. Let me just get rid of those for you. Now, basically, all you need to do is look at it. I mean, this has been enhanced more, so you've got 50% you've got contrast added here, it says here how much contrast I've added. Oh, 100% contrast, okay. So it's been, it's, it's been cranked up a bit, not, not a ton. Um, and you can see these, these strange rectangular cells or ponds, and some of them are, have got sort of diagonal parts coming across here, right? And then down here, we've got this really interesting formation here with these cells here in a sort of strange formation. These look more natural because the shapes are natural and then we've got a whole bunch of craters intermingled with all this stuff some of which have got smaller craters inside them like this one and you can even see at the bottom here what looks like a meteor sitting there where it's hit this crater and formed another crater inside it. Got like a, a, a roundish oval shaped object in there okay so we've got loads of these little craters, and then we have these cells here, which look more natural, and we've got a whole bunch down here, which are a bit more random, which look more natural, and normal shaped craters, okay? And we've got the riverbed on the left going up, and then we have at the top these long rectangular segments or cells or ponds, whatever you want to call them, and you can see where the, the sand has settled in them and filled them in. We've got these sand dunes here, which have filled in these areas. So these were probably quite deep. And what I've done is I've drawn here, on here, some shapes for you, just to point out what these are or what these look like. We've got a long rectangular one here, another one here, and there's, there's also this diagonal going across with cells here. There's a rectangular one here. Now, of course, these are probably millions of years old, and at one point may have been a lot more symmetrical and a lot neater than this. What you have to bear in mind is that these are eroded 
over probably millions of years and filled in the sand, which tends to round everything off, okay? And make the features less angular than they would have been initially, perhaps. And I've got some images up here um, as well of some salt mines on Earth. Now, pay, pay attention to this one. Now, I've shown some of these before. There, there are similar formations all over Mars in some areas that I've shown before. And you generally have these cells or ponds, right, on the shoreline next to a river inlet where there's salt water coming in, okay, and then they're trapped in these cells or ponds and obviously the water evaporates, they're, they're evaporation ponds basically, and then it leaves the salt behind which that can then be just removed and then um, cleaned or whatever and sold as table salt or whatever, okay. And often you'll have bunches of cells which are symmetrical like this, rectangular shapes, but often you'll have diagonal ones as well in between the odd one and they're not always the same size they're sort of symmetrical but they're not always exactly square or rectangular they're often slightly odd shapes like this one here there's another one here of a salt mine I don't know where this is it doesn't say um, it probably say if I, if I went to the page but you can see here that these you've got these shapes here okay which are kind of organic, but they're, they're artificial. They're organic, artificial shapes, okay? The shapes are literally cut into the landscape, the areas. An area is usually picked um, near where there's water, uh, water inlet, or, or in this case, I think, um, this is up in the mountainous area. But basically, the, the shapes generally follow the topography of the ground, and then they're cut into, into a sort of manageable areas or ponds which are easily dealt with and managed by people on the ground okay and uh, this is generally the sort of shapes you get and uh, there, there are loads of examples of this but generally on earth that's how we do it and I would imagine the people on Mars would have had a similar way of doing things because they had plenty of water they had similar ground Mars is a terrestrial planet, so the actual um, geology is very similar to, to Earth, okay? So things would work in a similar way. And uh, often you'll see them like this. Now, I've shown some of these up on Mount Sharp. They look like paddy fields. Some of them may have been salt, little salt mines or salt cells or, or um, little ponds for, for collecting water. Um, but they look very much like paddy fields as well up on Mount Sharp that I've shown before. And... Uh, so some of these are huge on Earth, and they're, they're perfectly symmetrical. But often you get some going some way, and you get a diagonal one going across here like this. See this diagonal one? And then we get a bunch of cells there, and then there's some smaller ones and longer ones. They're not always the same, but you can see that they are artificial by the way that they're laid out. What we're looking at here may well be a salt mine, because we've got these cells in a row with diagonal lines going across through them, like I just showed you on Earth, okay? There's a diagonal coming across there. I'll switch those off so that we can see those shapes in the ground, okay? You can see these rectangles and diagonals here. And there, there are crazy shapes all over this. Now, some of this may well be artificial, especially this area, okay? I've got a clip of it here in my graphics thing, processor, and uh, there's just a straight clip from the raw image, okay, which is a bit pale, so all you need to do is darken it, and add contrast, minus 10 brightness, contrast up 25, and you can really see these cell shapes now, okay, coming down with long straight parts and diagonals and cells here, we've got one there, we've got another rectangular one here, we've got that diagonal going across there, we've got that one there, we've got this here, okay? This looks to me like a salt mine, and it's situated in such an area as, which would be perfect for it, because we've got a, a river inlet coming straight into here, which would let the water in, which could be blocked off or dammed, whatever, and, uh, and then they, these could just dry out over time leaving the, the salt behind. So I'm not sure this is 
but it looks very much like some kind of intelligent set of structures here, mining structures, either mining salt or something else perhaps. It could be mining almost anything. So we've got these cells which will join up, okay? So that was interesting. And I've got, um, I've got a color clip of that which I've colorized and you can really see these long rectangular shapes here now and these cells. So that was an interesting one. I'm not 100% sure with this one, of course, because there are lots of similar holes in the ground, but it, it looks very symmetrical, some of this stuff, and doesn't look natural the way these are laid out in this pattern, okay? Then there's another image. Now, that, that was Arabia Terror. I've got another MRO image here. Now, this is Nanedi Valleys, okay? And we have a large impact crater. We've got the scale here. It's, it's, it's well, it's thousands of metres across, it's probably about 4,000 metres across, okay? Um, it's, it's huge, so it's kilometres wide. This is massive, right? And this central area is very strange, and you can actually measure it on here. This part here, which is kind of like a cat shape with two points there, like it's almost square, but it has these almost like ear shapes on it here, right? And uh, this is huge. Just the central part, that is about one and a half thousand metres across from there to there. If I zoom in, now this is very strange. And I don't think this is a mining area at all, this one, because there's no way in or out. This is a very deep crater. I would imagine it's about a kilometre or two, probably two kilometres deep. It's very deep. And we've got a very strange formation in the bottom of it and there doesn't seem to be any logical way in or out, like a road or pathway coming into it down the side of the crater. So this is a, 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 a complex impact crater. But what's very strange is when you darken this up, now this, is, um, this has had contrast added to it already a bit. In fact, it says here, I added a bit of a 60% brightness and 65% contrast, okay. So it's, been, it's had the brightness turned down because this was very light. Now, when you take a clip of this and darken it up, you, you notice this really strange object here in the middle, which is kind of like a, a wine bottle shape here. But we also have this perfect right angle just here. We've got this formation here and it comes to a, an abrupt corner there. And we've got this part coming down. And then we have this object which looks like it's buried deep in the ground or structure of some, of some sort. I don't know what it is. It may well be natural, but it's very strange. And it's shaped like a, a, a giant wine bottle, which is, is thousands of, well, it's something like 200 meters wide here. And it goes much more narrow there to about 50. Let's measure that end bit there. So it's like a giant bottle shape just there, like a wine bowl. Now, could this be the object that calls this crater? And is it possible that this is actually not just some random um, meteor, okay, which would normally be a roundish or oblong sort of oval shape? Usually meteors are sort of fairly sort of uh, randomly sort of uh, meteor shaped, okay, like a potato shape or a bit, a bit like Phobos, so often they look like that, where they have a, a, a sort of ovoid kind of shape to them. Now, now, what sort of object would create an impact area like this? It's very, very strange. And we have, because we have this right angled corner, then this object here, right? Now, let me show you in here. I've got, I've got this here, and I've really darkened it up, and I've turned it around. Right now, you can see that we've got an almost square area here, right? Almost perfectly square. Then we have this, what I'm calling an object, okay, which is the shape of a giant wine bottle, which is very strange, right? It seems to come to there like that. Um, let's do that again. It comes in a bit more narrow than that, like that, actually, okay? Now, is it possible? Now, I'm, I'm just um, theorizing here. Is it possible that this is actually not 
uh, a meteor and it's some other kind of object that, that fell into this crater or caused the crater. Is it possible this is some kind of very, very large vessel of some sort? Is that possible? I mean, it's all covered in it's all covered in sand, and this is all buried in. in we got we got complex dunes here. We have got these lovely dunes here, right? Loads of them, right? So obviously, this is all filled in, right? Let's go back to the let's go back to the satellite image now. What I might do is I'll, I'll do another version of this and really darken it up for you because um, it, it's quite pale and, and the shapes don't really stand out until you crank the contrast up really high. I've cranked it up a bit here, but I should have done it a bit more. So what I might do is do another version of this and then really crank it up so that these shapes stand out more because you can see this giant object here with a very strange impact area with a, a right angled part there and then we have a normal looking impact crater around it and you can see all the striations there where it was blown outwards okay which is cool but on the edge of it here we have a little crater on the edge which is almost square just there very strange right and then up here I was looking at that and I thought hang on a minute what's up here we got this formation here, which looks kind of natural, but almost sort of square here. Probably natural, okay. But then there's this formation just here. Now you can see a row of, stru of ghosted out, or what I would call eroded foundations, okay. Here in a row, we have one, two, three in a row. One, two, three. Just there, okay? Symmetrical dark patches. There, we got one here, one here, and one here, with a straight line going across there, down, which almost is almost parallel with the edge of the uh, image here. This is orientated north, okay? So that's pointing almost due north. And we got these cell areas, okay? On the edge of this crater area here, on this ridge. Now, that doesn't look much until you darken it. And when you darken it up, it looks quite unbelievable. Here it is, okay? That's the area we're looking at. Right, this is a large image, so you'll have to bear with me. We've got, now this looks quite vague, but you can see these dark patches. We've got one here, a square one, another square one, and another, rect well, they're rectangles. One, two, three dark rectangles. And we've got another rectangle here, another one here, and another one here with a, a, quite a vague but visible line coming straight down here like this and we've got a cell here or rectangle here we've got another rectangle here and we've got another one here all in a row with internal rectangles here okay this looks like the remnants the eroded remnants of a structure and it probably comes to here like that and we've got other parts going off here, which are all kind of broken up and eroded, okay, like this. You see, you see what I'm getting at here? Now, it's difficult to see in the actual image here, but you can see those cell shapes or rectangular eroded foundations, okay? You can see them there. And all you have to do is take a clip of that and add loads of contrast, like I've done. And uh, I've got some other clips of it here. I've turned it round, I flipped it to the left, 90 degrees, and you can see those shapes there. You can see the line, and you can see these rectangular dark patches. Now this is exactly the sort of thing you would see if you were looking at somewhere like Egypt, or somewhere like that, from space, okay? This is exactly the sort of formations you would look for if you were looking for pyramids or structures buried in the sand in the desert or something like that. It's exactly what you look for, rectangles and formations of rectangles. And that's exactly what we have here. We've got the remnants of a set of structures that came right along here on the edge of this kind of ridge, okay? And uh, that's what they look like, okay?
So there were buildings here at one point, and all we're seeing is the remnants of the foundations. The top parts of the buildings have been completely blown away and uh, removed, and it's filled in with sand and it's eroded. So it's all kind of softened the edges, and we've got sort of rounded edges to a lot of this stuff where it's been eroded by, by the wind. And it's filled in with lots of sand and dust that's filled in the area, like we have with this crater here. But this, this is just insane, this thing, because the shape of it, this, this actual whole thing, is almost square. And then we have a right angle here, right? And then we have the, the bottle-shaped artifact or vessel. I'm calling it a vessel because it's shaped like a vessel. You don't get meteors that shape, right? Could it be a crashed ship? Could it be some kind of terraforming vessel where it was a, like a, a drone ship that was sent here and designed to crash into the surface, releasing loads of bio information into the atmosphere? Who knows? It's very strange. And I don't quite understand what it is, but it looks very, very strange indeed. To have a, a crater this shape within another crater, a formation like this, is extremely unusual. And um, I would say the fact that we have a formation here as well, and then we have this almost square inner area with a right angle here, an per almost perfect right angle just there. You can see it there, just here. And then this object, which is buried, it's all kind of buried and, and filled in. There's probably been landslides and all sorts going on here. And po probably millions of years of sand and dust have, have landed in here as well. And, uh, but, but it doesn't look like an intelligent built structure because you would expect there to be some kind of road going in there to get in and out. Probably down this side here, but there doesn't seem to be one from what I can tell. You can see the edge of the crater. And this is really, really huge and, and really deep. And if we measure it, I mean, it's a, it's, it's a whole kilometre across. In fact, it's about one and a half, if you could do it diagonally. So it's absolutely huge. So this object here itself is something like six or uh, one, two, three. It's about 600 metres long, this vessel-shaped thing, OK, in the ground. What the hell is that all about? So I'll put clips of all this coming up in a minute. Um, I'll, I'll take some further back clips as well. We've got a whole bunch of them here for you to have a look at. And uh, really crazy stuff. And the thing is, on its own, you think, yeah, OK, maybe that's natural. But when you, when you put it up against the things that are nearby, like this area here on the ridge to the north, which has these rectangular cells on it, then you've got to start asking questions about what this actually is, what we're looking at here. And, uh, and of course, then we have the, the possible salt mine area as well to look at. Very interesting areas these are. And uh, you can look at this stuff for hours and hours. There's loads of detail in here. And you can see tons of really interesting things going on on the ground with this river coming up here, this river inlet, and then these ponds or cells which may have been salt mines or something else. If you have any ideas what, they, what else they might have been, leave a comment below. Let me know your thoughts. Um, always interested to hear what you've got to say. A lot of you come up with some great ideas in comments, so looking forward to that. And if you're not a member already, do come along to Mars Magazine and uh, check this out. I put this one uh, thing up last night, which I thought was funny. Yeah. Excuse the, excuse the language there, but I thought that was really funny. In fact, um, I, remember, I remember looking into the ancient Babylonian and uh, uh, ancient sort of civilizations many years ago. I did, I, when I was at college, I, was, I did a huge project on the Egypt and Babylon and all that stuff. And uh, ancient Iraq and stuff like that, where these came from, these carvings of the strange deities carrying these little bags. Now, on some of the statues and carvings, relief carvings, you can actually see they, ca they carry this little bag. They've got a watch, okay? Well, looks like a wrist watch. And uh, this isn't a very good image, actually. There are much better ones. They've got a wrist watch there. 
and a bag. Now, on some of the carvings and relief carvings, you can actually see there's a tube coming out of the bag, which goes up around, around the waist, or around the waist area, and up the back into their possible helmet. So what I think these were, these, these bags, were breathing, rebreathing devices. Obviously, these deities, whatever they were, or whoever they were, were probably from another planet, and could not breathe our atmosphere, or our air, and had to carry these little bags with them with a tube coming out so they could breathe, okay? So it was like a little breathing de um, device or a breathing apparatus. Now, why they didn't have just have this strapped on a, on a belt, I don't know. Um, why they had to carry them, I don't know. But uh, that is one explanation, possibly, for what these might be. Rebreathing devices or breathing apparatus. Who knows? Um, I'll, I may do a video on that actually because um, this is a, a mystery that people have been going on about for decades now. These little bags, little man bags that these uh, deities carry. And you can see them in South America and Central America as well. Some of the ancient gods there were carrying these little bags as well. So it was something that was common to an ancient culture that predates all modern cultures. Okay, It goes right back many thousands of years. So that was interesting. So do come along to Mars Magazine on Facebook, if you're on Facebook, okay? And check out some of the latest stories. There's some interesting stuff going on here. Carbonite sandcastle structures in calcium carbonate rich Tanzanian volcano. So amazing pictures here. I mean, and some of the stuff we see on Mars is a bit like this, and it looks really organic and, and animalistic. But uh, quite often it's just um, volcanic material, you know. Uh, so, there we are. So thanks for watching everybody. Clips coming up now.